I'm starting streaming first. I think we are good to go. Mm -hmm. Yes, we can start. OK, uh, welcome everybody. Uh, today, Phil Seamark, Philip Seamark is with us. Uh, he's going to talk about calculation groups in Power BI. Uh, for those who don't know uh, Phil, Phil is principal program manager at Microsoft, and he's also a member of Power BI I'm CAT team. And also, author of two DAX books, which I highly recommend to you. Uh, right, I, I, I think that short, short introduction is enough. My friend uh, Mustafa will make another short introduction in Turkish, then we will hand over everything to Phil. <laughs> Mustafa, you are mute, muted. I actually made uh, in English introduction first, but let make it a Turkish one as well very shortly. Uh, öncelikle etkinliğimiz İngilizce olacak. Bildiğiniz gibi önceki etkinlikler olduğu gibi konuşmacımız yabancı olduğu için e, bugün Philips'le birlikteyiz. Kendisi Microsoft'ta da bu alanda gerçekten e, çok daha yeni isimlerden birisi. Eminim çok e, güzel konuları e, bize anlatacak. E, şimdiden Ee, umarım güzel bir etkinlik olur. Çok teşekkürler Halil'e de e, organizasyon için. Teşekkürler. We are with you, Phil. We are listening to you. So over to me now. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay. Uh, uh, let me let me share my screen. Uh, so please. Are you sure you want to share? Yep, I want to share. And I want to share my screen. Let me know when you can see my screen. We see now. Excellent. OK, so hello, everyone. Um, thank you for inviting me. Uh, my name is Phil Seamark, as, as mentioned in the introduction. I, I work for Microsoft. Uh, I work for Microsoft on the Power BI team and a very small team within that Power BI team called Power BI CAT. CAT stands for Customer Advisory Team. Um, we have a small group of people and we spend a lot of time with large enterprise customers, helping them understand, get the best out of Power BI and, and, and really diving down into the internals and um, figuring out what's going on. And um, part of our role is we, we, we like to um, share what we learn. We uh, work on quite interesting challenges and um, problems. Um, uh, my role in, in, in the team is I tend to specialize in uh, DAX and data modeling. As, as mentioned in the intro, I do have a couple of books on DAX for Power BI. Uh, but today we're going to be talking about calculation groups, which is a relatively new feature. Um, this is just going to be an introduction to calculation groups. It's not going to be anything too heavy. But the idea of um, today's session is if you've never seen it before or you've never heard of it before, you will at least have an understanding of what they are and what you might do with them. And um, you know, hopefully it's something that you, if you're using Power BI, you might be quite interested in. <clears throat> so today's agenda is uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what are calculation groups? Where, <clears throat> where can you use calculation groups? How do I create a calculation group? And finally, once you've got them created, what sort of configuration options do you have available? And um, and we will leave some time at the end for questions. And please feel free to um, uh, pop your questions into the chat window if you want. And um, if relevant, then um, Hale, uh, hopefully I've said that right, um, can can jump in and uh, put your question to me. I, I, I quite like questions, um, so, so please don't worry about interrupting my flow. Um, First of all, what actually are, what is a calculation group? So um, 
primarily calculation groups provide the author of a Power BI report with the ability to um, apply a common DAX pattern across multiple measures. So let's imagine you have um, um, some common DAX patterns like uh, year to date or um, compare this month with the previous month and you apply these many times to more than one column. <clears throat> Uh, at the moment, before you have calculation groups, what happens is you end up with lots and lots of measures in your model. Um, what calculation groups is designed to do is to reduce the number of DAX expressions you have to, uh, to, to manage. So let's imagine you have, <coughs> let's imagine you have uh, three columns <coughs> or core measures in a, in, a, um, in a fact table, and these are numeric columns, and you want to have three common patterns over the top of that. So a year to date, a period comparison and a running total. So three measures over three columns means um, traditionally you would need to manage nine DAX expressions. But with calculation groups, you can um, simply define three DAX templates or patterns and, and apply them to as many columns as you like. And um, it, it means you have fewer, <coughs> fewer, fewer DAX expressions. Now, <clears throat> this gets particularly good if you start having um, many um, DAX patterns um, or templates and, and many columns that you want to apply this to. So if you had 10, 10 numeric columns and 10 DAX patterns, um, then normally you might end up with 100 measures. Um, but with calculation groups, you can reduce that down to only 10. Um, so that, that's the primary uh, focus for calculation groups. Um, but they do. Um, <clears throat> they, they, there are some quite. There are some good performance gains um, by using a calculation group a, a, as well. Now, once you have a, um, <clears throat> once you've added a calculation group to the um, to your model, it will appear in the data model as a table, a single column table in, in your model. Well, actually, there'll be two columns. There's there's one one column which um, contains uh, one row per calculation group item. So an item is a template. And the second column just allows you to control the ordering. It's very, very simple. And one of the beauties of um, the calculation group appearing as a table in your model is um, you can drag <coughs> the calculation group column onto visuals and it takes the place, you know, it, it can appear on an axis of a visual, which can be very handy. And I'll show you an example of that in, in the demos that I've got prepared for, to, for today. So yes, it can be used on you know, axis row and um, column headers of visuals and we'll be doing that. <clears throat> Where can I use calculation groups? Well, I can create a calculation group in Power BI Desktop. Now, a really important thing about this is you can't use Power BI Desktop itself to create the calculation groups, but yes, you can add a calculation group to Power BI Desktop. That might not make sense, um, but I'll show you uh, shortly. Um, what you do is you actually create the calculation group using a third party tool. The third party tool I'm going to show you today is Tabular Editor, and it's very easy. Um, this is a free tool. It's open source. It's, it's, it's built and managed and run by the community. Um, so in my demos today, I'm going to show you a simple model in Power BI, Power BI Desktop, and we're going to use Tabular Editor to, to add a calculation group to that model, plus, plus a few other cool things along the way as well. Um, if you're using Azure Analysis Services, you can create calculation groups there. And of course, once you have a model that's been um, posted to Power BI Premium, you can connect to that model um, hosted up in Power BI Premium that doesn't have a calculation group added to it, and then you can add a calculation group to that either using uh, Tabular Editor or <coughs> SSDT. And if you're running the on-premise version of SQL Server Analysis Services, um, so long as you have the 2019 version, uh, then you will be able to uh, add calculation groups to your model. And I talked just a little bit about um, what tools you can use to add calculation groups to your models. So I prepared a simple little matrix here that um, does, just tells us what we can what we can do where. Um, so first of all. How do I create a calculation group? Well, your, your underlying 
data model needs to be compatibility mode 1500. Now, if you don't know what a compatibility mode is, don't worry. So long as you're on the latest version of Power BI uh, desktop, you're on this compatibility mode. Um, the, the, the main ways that you might be able to, or the main tools that you might use to create or add calculation groups to your model are either using tabular editor, that's what I'm going to be using in, the, my, in my, uh, session today. You can use SSDT, which are the development tools, SQL Server development tools, which is an, uh, an, um, an add-in that you can uh, download and install into Visual Studio. Or you can, if you really, really um, uh, want to get down and um, uh, uh, into into low-level script, then you can use um, whoops, tabular model, tabular modeling scripting language, or the tabular object model scripting. But um, we won't, we're not going to be touching on that today. Now, <clears throat> you can use tabular editor to add calculation groups to Power BI Desktop, Power BI Premium, and Azure and Analysis Services. SSDT cannot at the moment create calculation groups in Power BI Desktop, but you can use this tool to create them in Power BI Premium or Analysis Services. You can just connect to those instances and deploy uh, models with these. I mean, if you're already using SSDT, you probably know this, um, but, the, but the focus of today's session is very much going to be on oops, Power BI Desktop and Tabular Editor. This is going to be the most common, common place most people would uh, use um, Power BI Desktop. Um, so I'll just pause there. I, I don't know if you've had any questions come through the chat window that you wanted me to look at at address, or shall I um, uh, jump into our, our, our demo? Yeah, we, we may have some questions. Some of them are early. Uh, can we get a copy of slide deck, your slide deck? Oh, absolutely. So what, what I'll do at the end of the session, probably not immediately, um, but I will load a link that mm -hmm. will give you this PowerPoint deck and um, all of the Power BI files used in demos today. So you'll be able to download that, importantly, play and um, you know actually get hands on and, and break it and, um, and and learn more about the calculation groups that I'm going to show you today. Okay, so thanks yes, for that. yes. So give me a few hours after the presentation, but I'll definitely get that um, link through for you and you're welcome to download and, um, and fire questions back to me if you like. <clears throat> okay, okay, thank you. All right, so I'm going to jump over to my demos now. Um, so I have got a blank Power BI report that's sitting on top of a nice simple model here. Hopefully you can see this okay and let me know if you would like me to, to zoom in. Um, but it's, it's this is an AdventureWorks database that you can download from the Microsoft Learn platform. We did recently release a, um, a whole bunch of new, uh, uh, well, a new learning path on DAX with about seven modules. It's a free um, free online tool to, to help you learn DAX. And um, this is this is the um, the model that you use for the, the labs and the, the working exercises. It's a, it's a nice star schema. And at the center of my star, star schema, I have a table called sales. And in my sales table, I have three columns that I'm going to focus on. We have a numeric column called sales amount. Um, another one called order quantity and a third one called total product costs. So what we're going to do is create calculation groups over these three columns. Uh, so order quantity, sales amount, and total product cost. Now this is a this is a uh, clean Power BI report with no measures, no calculation groups. So we're gonna have to set everything up from scratch. And it's a nice star schema. So um, first thing we're gonna do is, is showcase one of the recent um, additions we have made to Power BI Desktop, and that's the ability to have um, uh, to link to external tools. So when I click click to external tools, I have um, downloaded and installed the latest version of Tabular Editor. When I do that, it automatically appears in my external tools. So I'm going to click this button here, which will open Tabular Editor, and it will open Tabular Editor connected uh, to my model. So I can see in Tabular Editor the same tables, customer, date, sales, customer, date, sales, um, the, the same tables here that I can see here. I can add, I can add calculation, calculated measures here and they will appear back over here in my Power BI desktop um, report. So let's, let's do that. Let's do that to start with. Um, so I'm going to go to my sales table and I'm going to create a new measure. 
and I need my glasses for this. I'm going to create three measures. This is these are standard measures. My first new measure is going to be sum of sales amount, and the measure name is going to be called sum of sales amount. And we can see this here now. We will expand this. So you can see when it when it does it does appear over in Power BI Desktop. My next measure, my measure number two of three, is going to be called create new measure. My measure is going to be called sum of sales quantity, and the DAX expression that's going to be in this measure is sum of sales quantity. I didn't save the name there. Lastly, my third measure will be sum of product cost, and it's going to have the same very simple DAX expression as well. Now, they're not appearing over here in Power BI Desktop yet because I haven't saved my changes here in Tabular Editor. So I'm now just going to go File, Save, and there we go. We've got, got measures over here. So this just shows how you can actually use um, Tabular Editor to um, make modifications to Power BI Desktop, which is which is pretty neat. So I'm going to create a table over here with my three measures. Okay, hopefully you can see these numbers all right. I'll make them a little larger. Customize the current theme. I need to do this for me. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. So now what I want to do is I'm going to use calc I want to create a single calculation group item that will allow me to do a basic measure over all three of these columns, but I only want to create one DAX expression. And the one we're going to start with is a year to date measure. So in my table here, uh, I have a value um, for the first of the month, the second of the month, the third of the month. This must be starting in, in, in July. And these are the individual values we sold for that day, what we, uh, in terms of quantity, sales amount, and cost. So to do that, I can create my calculation group. So back over in Tabular Editor, in the model, I can say I want to create. Phil, can you maximize the Tabular Editor window? Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay, thanks a lot. I can't make this any bigger, I'm afraid. Um, that, that's much better. Okay, thank, wonderful. Thank you. No problem. So we're going to go model, and we're going to say I want to add to this model a new calculation group. And we can see it actually creates it down here in amongst the other tables because it looks very much like a table once it's once it has been um, created. Now we're going to call this calculation group. We're going to give it a name, and this is the name that it will appear um, the table. When I expand it, it does look slightly different to the rest of the um, tables. Um, so we're going to change the name of the column. Oops. Uh, here, the name of the column. I'm going to change it from the default text, which is name, to say it's going to be called time calculation. And really importantly, we want to add some calculation items. So if I right click here and say I want to create a new calculation item, this is where I can type my expression and my my my calculation group item name is going to be called year to date. And my DAX expression is going to be just simply calculate selected measure. I think I can, I can't make that larger. <clears throat> now, what's happening here is this is the normal DAX pattern that you might use when you're performing a um, <clears throat> When you're doing some DAX to do a calculated, uh, sorry, a running total, a, a, a year to date total. But this function here, selected measure, this is the, um, the uh, a calculation group 
specific function that you need to drop into your DAX expression when you want to reference the, the measure that you're um, uh, applying this pattern to. So it's like a placeholder. Um, so remember, we, we created three uh, measures just previously, the sum of quantity, sum of total cost, and, and sum of um, sales amount, or uh, these three here. When I use the calculation group in conjunction with the visual that's using these measures here, they will automatically take the place of, of this position. So this is a really important function that is only useful to um, calculation items. Uh, and what we can do down here in the format string is, um, we, we will, we can apply a format string. Let's just leave it as it is, okay. <clears throat> so now that I've, created my calculation group, I've added one calculation item and I've named things, I'm ready to save it back to the model. And if I jump now back to Power BI Desktop, we see down here in the bottom, there's a table called <clears throat> Time Intelligence. Um, I'll just click the Refresh Now button. The, the table appears to have a single column. And if I look in the model view, <clears throat> here's the table. And if I look in the data view, and I don't need to create a relationship, if I if I have a look at the um, the data view, the table just simply has one row with two columns, um, and we're going to add another row to this um, shortly. We're just going to play with this now in, in, in the report viewer just to see how this behaves. Cool. Um, so let's get rid of the filters. And now what I'm going to do is drag date to the canvas. I'm actually going to make this view small again, sorry, so I can fit my um, uh, here we go, just to just to give us some space here. <clears throat> right, so I'm going to make this a matrix. I'm going to drag my order quantity uh, measure onto this here. And at the moment it's behaving like an order quantity, but I'm going to drag my calculation group to columns. And here we go. So there's the order quantity. Um, it's accumulating that you can see here. But if I drag in my sales amount measure and we can drag in my total cost measure, what's happening here is the DEX expression that I wrote just once is working beautifully over these three measures. Um, so I could now have uh, uh, more than, more measures in my, my fact table, and I'm only applying my year-to-date expression just simply once, rather than trying to repeat it many, many times. I, otherwise, I would have had to create three measures to do this year-to-date. And it's as easy as that. That's that's. That's as, that's all it takes to to add a calculation group to your to your uh, model, and and apply it, and um, and that that's pretty cool. So so what I'm going to do now is go back to tabular editor, and we're going to add a second calculation um, group uh, um, to item to my calculation group. So if I jump back to um, tabular editor, we go to my calculation group, and I say. I'm going to create a second calculation item. My calculation item name is going to be called PD diff. Now PD in this context is, stands for previous day difference. So all this calculation, uh, this expression is going to do is give me the difference between the value for today and the value for yesterday. So let's just save that calculation item name and we'll paste in a piece of DAX which is slightly more complicated. <clears throat> cool. So in this, I'm creating a variable which I call my today, and I store this um, selected measure, this the special DAX uh, calculation group function called selected measure. So this is where my um, my normal measure would appear and get assigned to this, this variable. And, and that's basically getting the value for today. And then I create a variable which goes and establishes what was the um, value for that uh, measure for the previous day. And again, we're using the calculate function. 
the selected measure to go and grab whatever <clears throat> is being used with the calculation group and just simply jumps jumps back one day um, in, the, in, in the filtering to, to get the value of, of what this measure was for the previous day and then just returns the difference. So this is just giving us a delta um, between the two. So we'll save that. Let's come back to Power BI Desktop. We'll refresh. Wonderful. <clears throat> okay. So if we look at the data view for the time intelligence calculation group table, we now have a new row. We, we now have a new row. Um, you'll notice that the ordinal is um, exactly the same value. We can control this if, if we want to control the order. So at the moment, uh, when we drag this column to the canvas, PDDIF will always appear at, um, ahead of YTD uh, because it's, it follows, um, uh, it uses alphabetic sorting, but we can override that using the ordinal column and back in um, Tabular Editor. So with the report canvas now, come on, just waiting for this to go. Why is it not jumping? There we go. Cool. What we can do is um, take away some of these measures. And let's just leave all order quantity because it's a nice, simple, um, easy number to follow. So the YTD um, is accumulating as expected. And the PDDIF is um, what we can see here is the difference between uh, 33 and 9 is 24. The difference between 9 and 33 is the opposite. The difference between 6 and 9 is uh, minus 3. And if we drag back in the um, other measures, which are a bit harder to follow because they're bigger numbers, we'll have the same pattern. Um, so we can see you know, the accumulation of the order quantity, but also the, um, whoops, that's year to date. Here we go, the PD diff of these here, which is actually giving us the delta. Um, so that's it, that, that's the very basic um, introduction to calculation groups. Obviously, the, this gets better, the more calculation items that you add. And, you know, I've, I've seen uh, plenty of models where there are 10 or more standard patterns that get applied to the model and then those patterns get applied over you know many many many columns um, so that's the more of these um, uh, patterns that you, you need to apply and the more columns you want to apply to the more benefit you'll get from the measure sprawl <clears throat> but calculation groups don't just give you the oh was there a question sorry yeah very short question can we use calculation group in other visuals too oh ab absolutely um, that's a very good question so um, because it's just it behaves like a table so I can just drag the um, time calculation to the canvas and let's say we only want the YTD so we can filter it as normal and say I only want YTD and if I put date to here turn it into a line chart and then grab the sum of order quantity as my values uh, then if I get this line chart right, I probably want date onto the axis and time calculation on the legend. And we should hopefully see a YTD. So the, the number is going up and up and up and up until the end of the financial year. Then it comes back down and starts again or the actual calendar year. Then it's going up through the year and going down. So absolutely. Um, and, and, and I can um, put in sales amount as well. It probably doesn't make sense because these are going to be wildly different. Um, but um, oh, I, what I can do is put it on a secondary axis. So let's go order quantity on the. Um, can I do this? Hmm, I thought I could. Maybe this line and cluster chart. Here we go. There. So what we have here <coughs> is a. Um, a bar chart and a, well, a, yeah, a cluster column chart and a line chart and the line is the, the calculation group item over the order quantity and I think this must be the axis for the order quantity whereas this is the axis for the YT date, date of the um, other measure. Um, 
But absolutely, it, it just behaves like a normal um, table. So you can mix and match with the standard native visuals and all custom visuals. So that's good, good, good, good question. I'll save that there. OK, I, I think this is an, an answer also to other question. Can we can, can you have YTD, QTD and MTD groups and add all three to the same visualization? Yep, yep, yep. So let's. Um, let's just quickly do that. Say QTD. And it's QTD. Uh, QTD like that. And just simply save. And um, I need to refresh. <coughs> And if we choose QTD, yeah, these are the, um, you know, it's, it's resetting at the start of every quarter, for example, for both sales amount and order quantity. So that was as easy as that. Uh, and if we wanted to add, um, you know, finally month today, then, um, you know, you're starting to get a feel for how the um, calculation group can really start um, simplifying the, the measure sprawl that you might otherwise have. So, you know, you're typically going to end up with um, hopefully quite a lot of, DAX expressions uh, in your or calculation items in your calculation group. And you can have more than one calculation group as well. Um, we're we're going to get to that. So I've got a second demo that I want to show you though, because what calculation groups can also be useful for is the ability to provide the end user um, to dynamically switch measures. And what I'm going to show you first is how um, this is normally done in a DAX based solution, so not using calculation groups, so you understand what the um, use case is. And then what I'm going to do is show you how you can use calculation groups to solve that same challenge, because there are some performance benefits that you can get for that. So the first part of this exercise is going to be showing you how to build a um, dynamic measured like experience just using DAX. And um, to start with, what I'm going to do is add a very simple table to my model. Um, so my new table is going to be called, and I'll zoom in, I'm adding a table to my model and my table is going to be called dynamic measures and it's just going to have three uh, rows in the single column table. I'll click OK and the idea of this table is to give the end user the ability to click on a slicer to decide what do I want to display, my order quantity, my product cost and my sales amount. You know, on a on a on a on a button. Um, so that's been added to my. Here's the table that I've just added to the model. And if we look at the contents of this table, dynamic measures, it just looks like this. This is all it looks like. And and what that allows me to do is on a blank page, I'm going to um, add that to my desktop. I'm going to turn it into a slicer which is somewhere here. And I quite like the ability to set my slicer to be a uh, horizontal slicer. So it looks and feels more like buttons. Cool, because I'm going to let my end user click on the button to decide what they want to show in my measure. And then what I do is I create a, uh, a clever measure that I'm going to add to this table. So I'm going to create a new calculated measure and just to remind you, I will be saving this PBIX file to the um, uh, to somewhere that you can access after the session. So my measure is going to be called dynamic measure. It uses the switch DAX function to say, hey, what have I currently selected in the slicer that I just added to the canvas? And then if I have um, selected the order quantity value, um, return this measure. This is the measure that we created earlier in the session. Whereas if you if you selected sales amount, we're going to return the sum of sales amount. If you if you click total product cost, you'll you'll um, will display this. Cool. So let's add that to the measure. And now we're going to do is um, drag the credit credit visual, drag the date column to here. And we're going to use the dynamic measure, what we just created. And at the moment, it displays nothing, which is not ideal. Um, the calculation groups do this slightly better. But if I click order quantity, 
we can see that the dynamic measure is returning the order quantity. You know, remember these numbers 9339. Nine, this is what we looked at before. But if I click on sales amount and I click on total product cost, you know, we can we we can let the end user um, uh, control what's being shown. And you know, it's the same here, which is actually quite a nice experience. Um, but calculation groups allows you to to do uh, a similar thing. Um, but a little bit more efficiently. So if you've already done this in your, your um, DAX reports, that's great. It does actually work pre pretty well, although it, it, um, there are issues with around formatting. Um, so you'll notice here that um, uh, sales amount, uh, ideally we want to display the currency symbol um, and we might want to control the decimal places. You can do that in DAX by adding the format function around here uh, and, and, and controlling what um, symbols and decimal places you have, but the format function will return, will convert this to text and it will make summing um, and, and other issues alignment not so good. So that's the um, that's the use case and that's how you would how you might solve it using DAX. So what we're going to do now is apply exactly the same approach but using a calculation group to solve this. So I'm going to jump back to my tabular editor. And I'm going to say I want to create a new calculation group. I can add a second calculation group to the same model. And importantly, calc dynamic. In the calculation group I've just created, there is a, um, a property called precedence, which is set to one. If I look at the one I created earlier in this session, the calculation group uh, time intelligence, has a precedence of zero. Now I can change these around. I can give them any number that um, I like. The, they can't share the same number, but what this means is um, when you are nesting, nesting and layering calculation groups, this determines which ones get executed first. Um, so um, I, I have an example of that that I can share with you. So what I need to do in my calculation group is add three items. We're going to add an item called order quantity and that's simply going to call oh, not sum of sales amount cool have i spelt that right i can't my eyes that's close enough okay i'm going to create another calculation item called sales amount and that's going to be just call this measure. That's it. We're not using that special um, selected measure. And then finally, we're going to add my third calculation item, which is going to be called total product cost. We can drag that expression over. So order quantity, sales amount, total product cost. Um, and that's it. We can save this. So there's not a lot to this. Jump back to my Power BI desktop environment. Because I've added a calculation group, there should be another table appearing in my model. This is what I've just added. I don't need to relate this into my, my core um, uh, set of tables. The, um, the calculation group I just added has three rows as expected. I'm not controlling the ordering. We can set this if you like, um, if, we, if we have time, just to show this um, having the ability to set the order of these. But now finally, I want to use this in my model. And come on. There we go. Cool. <clears throat> oh, I need to do one more thing. Sorry. I need to add a measure to my calculation group in this, in this case. Um, which is going to be called dummy measure, and it's going to return nothing at all because because calculation groups do sit over the top of measures and replace what they would otherwise do. Um, and um, yeah, so what we're going to do is take the name of the uh, the name column, drag that to the canvas. And we're going to set that up as our slicer. So very much like what we did in the other table. And that gives us out the values for the slicer. 
we jump to the properties and I, I, I like to make them look like buttons, but the values for these buttons are actually coming from the calculation group. Now, when I drag the dummy measure to the um, canvas and combine it with my, my date, and let's make that a table so we can see. We click on order quantity, and there we go. But one of the nice things about this is it's actually formatted correctly. I haven't said anything about formatting, but it's picked up the correct formatting uh, details from my, um, my underlying measure. In this case, it's the order quantity. Uh, we click on sales amount. Oh, sales amount is, um, hasn't picked it up. <laughs> I think I need to set sales amount here to be a currency, that's why. And my default currency is using this um, dollar symbol here. Has that worked? No. Okay, we can come back to that. And then of course going to um, total product cost. Oops, I'm being a bit fat fingers here. So this gives you the ability to allow the end user to say, I want to see a, uh, a line chart that, um, you know, when I click on order quantity, it gives me the order quantity. When I click on sales amount, it dynamically switches and, and shows me that measure and uh, likewise here. And you could do this for things like date ranges and, um, uh, you know, days versus months versus columns or, or measures, etc. cetera. So, uh, in fact, what I'm gonna do is, <clears throat> On the sales amount, I do want to fix that um, uh, currency here. Is um, I'm going to jump back to Tabular Editor. I'm going to pick on the sales amount calculation item, and in the format string, format string expression, I'm just going to paste in a um, a format string. And there are dynamic ones that you can use, and I have a simple example um, which I'm not going to build but I'll share with you that um, dynamically manages the, um, the, the, the, the currency symbols, which you're probably more used to working with over in, um, uh, in Europe uh, and uh, Asia. Um, so I've saved that. So I'll go back to Power BI Desktop. And here, the sales amount um, calculation item is now showing the correct um, format expression but it is still a numeric value so it's you know subtotals and other calculations will work nicely so lastly i'm just going to open a, um, a a power bi report that does a currency conversion using um, uh, calculation groups this is just opening in another screen here It's very, very early in the morning here, so my computer's still waking up. <laughs> <laughs> very quick question. Having this dynamic measure calculation group can be done only by by being single select filter? Um, yes, I think so. Um, although if we drag the, if we say we want to make this a matrix, and drag the name to the column headers. There we go. This probably gives us the ability to you know, select or unselect multiple measures. So, and that, that's much harder to do with the DAX expression. So this is the um, calc group dynamic. Whereas over here, mm, yeah, I don't think we can do it so much. We can try. So I'm going to turn that into a matrix. We'll put the value onto the column headers. Maybe you can. Um, we don't want totals. I oh, you know that does work. That is working. But totals don't make sense. Um, uh, row subtotals. Right, column subtotals is what we don't want. There we there we go. So if I turn it off, we see all three, we click one, we click two. So that's the DAX version. Here, 
if we have nothing selected, <clears throat> oh, we see all three. So it behaves similarly, but um, we get the currency um, symbol on the sales amount, which is um, pretty cool. So good question. And that's allowed me to um, generate a, a, a measure here. <clears throat> So the, this particular report, which I'll again I'll share, if I open this in Tabular Editor, it has two calculation groups at the bottom, one to handle currency conversion, and this calculation group has got two items, one that does no conversion and one that does a conversion. So if you're, um, uh, if your calculation happens to be US dollar, then it uses the selected measure. If you use, um, which is the base um, currency for this model, uh, but if you happen to pick another um, um, currency, then it will perform a calculation on the fly. So I'm not going to go through this line by line, but you hopefully get the idea. And the currency conversion calculation precedence is zero. And plus on top of that, it has um, uh, some time intelligence like expressions here. Uh, what's current year to date, previous year, previous year, year, year to date, you know, year on year, year on year percentage, you know, you could go crazy. So there's a couple of here. And with these applied to the model, um, you know, we can do the standard calculation group dynamic switching, similar to what I just showed to you. Um, but equally, over here, what's happening is dynamically on the fly, we just have one measure which is um, the US dollar measure, but when you drag it across multiple currencies, it's it's not only um, converting the format string expression, but it's also doing a, um, a numeric um, conversion as well. So I, I, I'm not gonna go through this because this is a little more advanced, a little more complicated. The topic of this, um, this session is introduction, but I will make this PPIX file available if you want to explore and have a little bit of a play to see how it um, is configured and the advantages of, of, um, of you know, how you might solve this challenge, particularly currency conversion nicely with calculation groups. Um, and if I just actually jump back to the converted currency, um, there is a special uh, element that I want to highlight in here, and that is that the format expression property is using a sp another special calculation group based DAX function that helps you um, uh, uh, solve some um, uh, format string, uh, format string um, challenges on the fly. So this is a really good example of how to um, not just convert the uh, dollar value or the, the currency value, but the format string as well, just to make sure that when you do the conversion, the Japanese yen is showing the yen symbol, the great British pound is showing the um, the sterling symbol, etc. So, so they're the three demos that I've, I've got for you today. Uh, I'll jump back to my PowerPoint slide. Um, we, we talked about um, how you might be able to configure calculation groups. Uh, we just said, you know, we, we showed some examples of, of how you can set the uh, format string, both on the calculation item and on the um, calculation uh, group. The ordinal properties to, to, to control the order that the um, calculation items will appear. So you can force an order that's different to the, um, the, the standard alphabetic forcing, the uh, ordering. And finally, the precedence of the calculation group. This is only important when you have more than one calculation group in your model. And this just controls which one gets executed first and then as it nests down the um, dependency chain. The, the important factor of this is it's a, it's a number and each number needs to be different. Each calculation group needs to have a different number. So, um, do you have any questions? Yes, we do. Uh, several questions are related with uh, considerations such as any, any, any issue, any problem, any performance issue with, with using calculation groups. And also another question, mm -hmm. is it available in on-prem SSAS version? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's just do the um, on-prem one first. So mm -hmm. I'm just gonna jump back to if I, oops. Okay, 
So we had a look at this uh, here. You can use SQL Server Analysis Services, which is the on-premise version. Of course, you can install this in a VM as well, but you just need to be on version 2019. Um, so it won't work with 2017 or earlier. And the other question that you had, sorry, was the... Yeah, well, well, uh, what are the known issues, problem, limitations okay. with calculation groups? Okay, so what we're finding is that because calculation groups are a relatively new, clean, modern uh, piece of code, they can actually perform better, um, particularly in the exercise that I just shared with you, the dynamic switch. So if in your calculation, if in your model, you're applying um, calculations based on the switch statement, what we're finding is that if you're using a calculation group, in a lot of cases, this can definitely outperform the traditional switch statement in DAX. Um, I highly recommend that you test because in your case, you might find it is no different or potentially is worse. You know, everything you do in DAX when it comes to performance testing uh, or is performance is just test, test, test on your models. There are there are many factors that can influence the um, performance, such as the amount of data, the cardinality of data, relationships, um, the complexity of what goes in here. Um, so, so it's, it's not a simple black and white. Yes, it will perform better in every case, but typically what we're finding is that it does. Um, I, I received a um, an email uh, earlier earlier this month from someone saying, hey, I've got this, um, this query that's taking a long time, you know, five or 10 seconds. Uh, here it is, they showed me in, in the email, you know, very, very long statement. And, and I noticed they were using this DAX switch statement. And it was it was probably 9 p.m. I was probably tired after a long day of work, so I just lazily said, "Oh, just try calculation groups." And um, <laughs> I sent that email three minutes later, and and a couple of days later they came back and it's like, "Hey, fantastic news! You know, we we <laughs> added calculation groups and it's so much faster." And um, you know, I, I I can sort of claim credit, but I can't really claim credit. But um, certainly, I, you know, that was a recent example where um, you know, very big model at a very large enterprise. They they they use the calculation group to to uh, um, improve performance and it, and it worked well. And I've I've seen plenty of examples like that. Uh, but as always, you know, definitely test, test, test. So um, that's the that's the that's the key. So OK, performance wise, it is much better, uh, you say. Uh, one, well, one bill, sorry. It's it's newer code. The thing is, the switch statement is is has been around a lot longer, um, so it's harder to optimize it without introducing regressions and bugs. So, to try and optimize the switch statement might take six months of actual engineering work, whereas cool. calculation groups have um, got a lot of the learning. So, absolutely, calculation groups will um, uh, probably um, give you a much better experience and you know, potentially be um, faster. Okay, when will it be available within Power BI desktop without using external tools? Because it means using learning and other tools, which is Tabular, a Tabular Editor is great tool, but yep. it is another tool. Yeah, okay, so um, a couple of things there. Uh, I believe the work is underway to do that, but I don't have a date, I'm afraid. Um, although I do recommend you becoming familiar with Tabular Editor, uh, even if you're not working with calculation groups, it's a fantastic tool that does many, many things better than um, you can do using the traditional Power BI interface. Um, we, we have a challenge when we design the Power BI desktop product in, um, you know, we want to make it welcoming and friendly to someone who's new to Power BI desktop. And if you overload it with tons and tons of advanced features, it might appear very daunting. And, and it, we have to be careful in the way we do this. Um, so in some ways, um, you know, if you're, if you're getting serious about Power BI and you're rolling up your sleeves and you're a more advanced um, developer, then I recommend that you should be using uh, Tabular Editor anyway for a lot of tasks. Um, so, so if you're not using it, um, I think it's a good thing to invest in learning. However, I'm pretty sure it will turn up in Power BI Desktop at some point, but I, I don't have a date for you, I'm afraid. Um, our backlog and, and list of items that we want to add to Power BI Desktop is, is, is huge. If you go to ideas.powerbi.com and, and look at the vast number of great ideas that people have given to us, there's a lot there. So it's just a case of trying to find the um, the, the, the time and, and opportunity to, to slot in this work to the, uh, to the engineers. Um, 
A couple of things I want to call out, um, we can come back to the questions, is there's some links here that I'm showing on my screen. Um, so aka.ms, which is the standard Microsoft URL shortener, slash calculation groups, will take you to the blog post that's um, got a lot of detail, everything that we've covered today and more. So that's a really good place that you can go to to um, uh, learn and read a bit more about calculation groups. Um, I mentioned we've recently added a DAX learning path to um, the Microsoft Learn platform. So here there is a free uh, online course that's self-paced that you can go through and watch videos and do labs and, and learn more about DAX. It's designed um, for a business analyst. It's, it's not advanced, but um, it, it will teach you an awful lot. I highly recommend that. And then finally, we have a, um, a Power BI guidance. Um, as, as members of the CAT team, and you, you've probably seen quite a few of us blog and present and, and, and be on YouTube, we work with um, uh, a lot of large customers and everything we learn, um, you know, all the problems that we solve and all, all the opportunities that we, we, we get to work with, we, we write this up in Power BI guidance. So if you're building Power BI, and you want to know what are the best practices and what are the really good tips to um, to follow, then absolutely go to Power BI Guidance. So these are probably the three references that I would recommend you consider um, if you're um, if you're working with Power BI Desktop and you want to get the um, you want to apply the best practices. So thanks sorry, do you want to jump back to the questions? How are we going for time? Thanks for these links. Very valuable resources to learn new things. Uh, I, I, I'm personally wondering how, how does it interact with uh, with uh, cross highlighting the the other visuals in the same report page? Is there any side effect? Um, you do have to be kind of careful, I think, around um, because calculation groups do apply over measures. Um, I mean, should we try an example? Which one uh, should we use? Um, I'm just conscious of time. Um, so we've got. I think here was the calculation group. Um, let's duplicate this page. Let's get rid of this. This is a. Calculation group. Oh, let's move this. OK, so I'm going to say date to here. And what what what what do we want? Um, if we click on a day, we can see that it's behaving. Um, sorry, you were going to su suggest something. It look it looks normal, but uh, I was having an issue with uh, cross filtering while using uh, calculation groups. That's why I I asked this question. Oh no, fair enough. It's possibly getting into a more a more advanced um, uh, topic, and mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm, I'm freestyling here a little bit, maybe not too well. Um, but uh, you know, if I, I, you know, I'm clicking on a uh, where's, where's some filtering. Let's filter by a product something, product it, color. Especially with cross filtering the other visuals in the same page, I had yeah. a few issues. Maybe it was my bad. <laughs> So I'm clicking on red. And it's, you know, these must be the values for red. Are they? Um, yeah, so it's um, it quite possibly is. I mean, do take care um, to make sure that it it is, is producing the, the, the value that you want. Uh, time calculation, YTD. I don't know why that's displaying that, but um, OK. So so I'll, I'll save these PBIX files. OK, OK, and make thanks. Them available. Did you have any last questions? Uh, yes. Uh, do, do, do you recommend to use calculation groups in production models, production systems? I mean, not just for testing purposes. We can fully oh, it, can we can it, fully use it now? Absolutely, definitely, yes, yes. I highly recommend them. Um, you know, test them the same way that you would test any um, any any element of your model. But yes, you can definitely use this in in, in production, and it can be used in in Power BI shared as well. You don't have to just use it in Power BI Premium. It can be um, you can add it to a model that's published to uh, standard free or Power BI shared as as well as Power BI Premium. So uh, please do go for it. It's a it's a, it's a very cool product. And um, I mean, I'm just showing you the intro. Um, there have been some blog posts recently over on SQL BI. So Marco Russo and Alberto Ferrari have done a series on 
calculation groups with some more creative uses. Um, so now that I've hopefully shown you the intro to, uh, when you go and read those articles, they might now make more sense. Um, OK, uh, la last two questions. Is it possible to create calculation items in bulk using DAX formula? Yes, so here you can use uh, tabular modeling scripting language or Tom to be able to do this in JSON or using, say, something like VS Code. So you can um, you know, write some C sharp that um, perhaps either hard codes or, or reads in a dynamic config file and generates these on the fly to you know, uh, multiple measures. So if you wanted to automate or, or script that, then um, you wouldn't necessarily use tabular editor because tabular editor is a UI, you're clicking and you're typing type experience, which often uh, works well for um, doing things one at a time. Um, but um, if you wanted to do some, you know, really, really interesting things in bulk, then I would recommend using Timsel or Tom. And um, I have a series of dig, I have a series of blog posts um, over in my blog site, dax.tips, that talks about how you can connect to um, uh, Power BI models or um, analysis services models and, and, and perform tasks like that. I don't have one yet on calculation groups, but um, I might do one of those in the next few weeks. So look out for that. Yeah, OK, thanks. Uh, Christian is asking, I missed that question previously. How did you install the DAX formatter and team tool as an external uh -huh. tool? <laughs> Eagle eyed. No, I know what you're talking about there. So up in my um, uh, external toolbars, I've got a bunch of icons here. So the way to get that is um, you go to powerbi.tips. tips rbi.tips my good friend seth and mike over there they have a bunch of uh tools um, but they've recently released one called business must be under here business ops you go and grab business ops and i'm going to download this now and when i download this it's coming down here this is free. It's a bit slow for me this morning. OK. Scanning for viruses. Open the file. It's opening a file. If I run this, it pops up a little utility somewhere. It's coming. Uh, yes, I'm happy to run this. Because <laughs> I, I know them personally. If they do anything mean to my machine, I'll just I'll, I'll chase them down. <laughs> uh, this is installing. I thought I actually had this on my machine. I probably could have found it and um, done this another way. I think that's installed. I need to run it. Business. Power BI tips business ops. I just need to run the app. Excuse me. Wonderful. OK, uh, yep. Here's what it looks like. Uh, I think I've run it multiple times. You have the ability to set on external tools and there are about 30 or 40 tools here. So the person that spotted the DAX formatter what I can do is say I want to click the um, DAX guide and I want it to open in Edge. Um, I've already got the DAX formatter and, I, and that will, that will open the Edge. Um, but let's say I click this and install tools. Are you sure? This is brilliant. I think <laughs> it just adds it here somewhere. I think maybe I need to, to close and reopen it and that's all it does. And then when I click on um, this icon, it just opens the the web page so it's not as exciting as you were possibly hoping um, but i can um, so. it's not going to format um not too nicely but no, it's formatted and i can paste it back so you can add a whole bunch of tools it's pretty cool they've only just released it and i think they're adding things all of the time so there are there are some pretty neat um tools in this in this list so good spotting 
Thanks a lot. Uh, we are already out of time. Uh, that, that was a brilliant session, Phil. Thanks a lot. Thank you. It was good to see you uh, with us. Hope to see you soon again <laughs> in the near. Yeah, and please, uh, please feel free to reach out. Yeah, my contact details are in the you. report. So please feel free to reach out if you have any questions or you want to follow up, you know, follow me on Twitter and DM me or, or say hi on, on LinkedIn. Let me know if you're using calculation groups. Um, if you've got any other questions about data modeling on DAX, I don't promise I can turn them around super quickly, but um, I do enjoy helping people solve problems. It's a bit of a, it's how I relax. Uh, but thank you for inviting me. Um, hope you could understand my my my New Zealand accent. <laughs> um, but as I said, I will make the assets available so that you can you know watch the recording and go back over it in your own time and um, and learn more about calculation okay. groups. <clears throat> okay, thank, thanks a lot for that, Mustafa. Would you like to add anything? Uh, it was really great session for me as well. Thank you for this great content, Philip, and thank you for your time to contribute our uh, community. Hope to see you in another session, maybe in the future. Cool. No, thank you. All right. See you later. Okay. Bye -bye. Thanks a lot. Bye bye, everyone. See you.